You think Italy, you think wine, cheese, pasta, beautiful countryside, but did you know that one of Western Europe's most endangered reptiles lives there? This is the Western Hermans tortoise. Now, Hermans tortoises are broken down into two recognized subspecies, the Eastern and the Western. So you might be thinking to yourself when you hear the term Hermans tortoise, well, they're everywhere, they're not endangered. In truth, all Hermans tortoises are listed as near threatened, meaning their populations are declining, sadly, but the IUCN tags the Western Hermans tortoise as endangered. This subspecies is in so much turmoil that some of their specific populations in nature could go extinct in our lifetimes. Found in Italy, France, and Spain, the Western Hermans tortoise is suffering in nature for various reasons. Typical ones like collection for the illegal pet trade, habitat encroachment, fires, that kind of stuff that you guys hear all the time. But also, one of the main things that threatens the very existence and the future of the Western Hermans tortoise is impurity. And when I say impurity, I mean that not just in captivity, but also in nature, this rare tortoise is crossbreeding with its more common cousin, the Eastern Hermans tortoise. The situation in captivity with crossbreeding these animals is already a big enough of an issue for people like us that want to see them preserved in their natural state. But to actually have it happening in nature is an even bigger issue. In areas like Italy and France, hybrids are turning up everywhere to the point where people haven't seen a pure Western Hermit's tortoise in a long time. Testudo Hermani Hermani, or the Western Hermans tortoise, is also called the Italian tortoise. And in fact, in one of the two most popular books ever written on the species that is publicly available, Holger Vetter refers to them strictly as the Italian tortoise. Now, when it comes to them in nature, Italy holds the vast majority of the populations. However, some have gone extinct, like Rome. And when I'm talking about Italy, I'm talking about the mainland of Italy where they've existed for thousands and thousands of years. In fact, just recently, they discovered the remains of a Western Hermit's tortoise in Pompeii from 2,000 years ago that actually had an egg in it. They're also found on the Italian islands, Sicily and Sardinia. They're found in the south of France with the island Corsica. And they're also found on the mainland of Spain, including the Balearic Islands, where these little examples of them occur. We're gonna save that kind of stuff for another video. I really wanna dive into the specifics behind the localities of these animals, because they truly are different from each other. But nonetheless, the Western Hermit's tortoise is found in those three countries in a variety of habitats. In nature, Western Hermit's tortoises are sun lovers. They literally marry themselves to the sun and they respond to it greatly. They'll come out in the morning at first light, they'll graze, they'll warm up to optimal temperatures, and then they go back into hiding because it gets pretty darn hot during the day where they come from and also here in South Jersey. And then they'll relax for a while until the peak of the day subsides a little bit with that heat. They'll come back out and go back to grazing. When it comes to the actual habitat preferences, they love areas with low lying vegetation, scrublands, areas with some rocky or sandy soil, and some of them are found right on the coast. Take Mallorca, for example. The tortoises literally live on sand surrounding the beaches and in the dunes and all that stuff. Throughout their range, they do hibernate or brumate, and depending on where they're from will determine the duration that they're asleep for. So let's say we're out in Northern Italy. Those tortoises are gonna sleep for the winter much longer than those on some of the islands like Mallorca or Minorca or Sardinia, for example. In the spring, the tortoises wake up and they breed, and then come late spring, early summer, they lay their eggs. The females can lay up to three clutches in one season, and they will lay anywhere between one and three eggs per clutch, sometimes a little bit more depending on the locality at hand. The babies then incubate for the entire summer and then hatch timed with fall rains. Here at Garden State Tortoise, we keep the animals separated by known locality and we keep them in sun-drenched locations. Now I know it's getting shaded behind me right now because it's very late in the day, but during the day these tortoises are blasted with sun. They also have cold frames in which they hibernate in during the winter outside here in South Jersey. And we were also very careful in the vegetation that we picked for them to live on. In addition to that, we carefully selected the substrate in which they could thrive on. And luckily here in South Jersey, being right on the coast, we have a nice sandy substrate, which the tortoises feel perfectly at home on.
So, what is the Western Hermit's Tortoise? Well, it's a member of the very famous tortoise genus Testudo, which you guys have seen us cover many times. Now, they are a Herman's tortoise, so they have the classic Herman's tortoise traits. One, for example, being the horn tip at the end of the tail. But one thing you're going to notice right off the bat with the Western Hermans is the golden yellow or some degree of vibrant yellow as the ground color on the carapace. It varies from locality to locality and even within a given population, but we'll save that for a later video. Nonetheless, the yellow is typically going to be very vibrant and it's going to deeply contrast the black markings on the shell as well. The tortoises we're using in this video have been lightly coated with some organic coconut oil to make them pop so that you guys can really see the color. Normally they don't look like this. However, in nature and in a very well planted pen, they will develop a waxy sheen on their shells from constantly rubbing against the vegetation. Tortoises are creatures of habit, so they tend to follow the same pathways every single day to get to where they want to forage or breed or lay their eggs. So constantly rubbing against that vegetation gives them a nice sheen like this. On the fifth vertebral scoot, now if you count them going down the spine here, one, two, three, four, five, the Western Hermit's tortoise has a very, very well-known trait. They have a marking that is very reminiscent of a keyhole or a mushroom cloud. Again, it varies. Sometimes they're skinny, sometimes they're wide, but you can really see it on these animals, particularly this one right here. The supracaudal shield, which is this right here, is going to always be divided, whereas in its eastern cousin, it can be divided or undivided. While on the subject of the shells, the Western Hermit's tortoise most notable trait is going to be found on the plastron in the form of two longitudinal jet black bands that run parallel to each other along the mid line. It varies, but in some animals, like this animal right here from the south of France, you can see just how unbroken and jet black they are. Typically, they extend from the humeral scoots all the way down to the anal scoots, and sometimes spots or smudges might be found on both the under and inner sides of the ghoulers. But usually, this is what you're looking at. Totally uninterrupted, super duper awesome looking. Super duper? <clears throat> but for the most part, this is what you are looking for when you're trying to properly identify these animals. While we're on the subject of the plastron here, I want to point out one last thing. These triangular scoots found right here on either side, those are called inguinal scoots, and those are going to usually be present in the Western Hermit's tortoise. They're also usually present in the Eastern, but not to confuse you too much, if we start talking about the Dalmatian Hermit's tortoise, which yes, we will save for another video, they're usually lacking it. Another trait the Western Hermans is very well known for is the presence of a subocular or bright yellow cheek spot just underneath and behind each eye. Now, this varies in presence depending on where the animal's from and also its age. So if you look at the three animals here, you've got one that has them very, 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 very noticeable, one that has them kind of noticeable, and then this little male here, well, he's kind of lacking them. He is still in every way, shape, and form a pure Western Hermit's tortoise. He's just a much older animal and he has lost it now. Speaking of males, there are notable differences between the two genders as they are sexually dimorphic. The males are going to be the smaller one. They're going to have a concave plastron right there. See that? That's something that a lot of turtle and tortoise species are well known for. When it's compared to the larger female, she is flat or level. She needs to be thicker to be able to carry that clutch of eggs. Comparing the two, you can see the big difference in tails right there. The male has a very large, long tail that he carries primarily to the side, whereas the female has a much smaller tail. Western Hermit's tortoises grow to be between four and six inches in length, respectively, which does, again, vary between locales. But this is what you're looking at right here, the smaller male and the slightly larger female. Baby Western Hermit's tortoises are not exactly mini versions of the adults because their colors tend to be muted, but they do start to show some traits right away, like of course the heavy black on the plastron and that bright yellow cheek spot. These two little babies right here are reminders of what is being done to help this species in the wild. All of the countries where these animals naturally occur are doing their part to try to save them from extinction. And again, that includes keeping them pure. A lot of genetic work is being done. We've actually done our own genetic work right here. And if you want to read more about that, head on over to our website, hermanihaven.com, and you can read all about that stuff. 
When it comes to Italy, France, and Spain, there are head starting programs, again, corresponding with genetic work, and they have broken the Western Hermans tortoises down into management units based on conservation. So what they're doing is there are all kinds of cool things to try to bring these animals back from the brink. The Western Hermes tortoise may not be in as much trouble as some other species out there, but they should never, ever be discounted. They are a beautiful species, highly coveted, one of our absolute top favorites. And in fact, a lot of the work that we've done as Garden State Tortoise centers around this remarkable, beautiful species. So, there's a lot more to be said about Western Hermans tortoises regarding their localities, conservation, and their care, and of course, other Hermans tortoises. So let me know in the comments if you would like us to cover more topics regarding this amazing, beautiful species.